Hello, my name is Dr. Paul Simon. I'm a psychiatrist in private practice in the area of St. Louis, Missouri. This video, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about supplements, vitamins and supplements that are on the market and how to evaluate good ones, bad ones, and my thoughts about a few specific ones. Please like and subscribe to this video channel um, for more videos and please suggest any topics or uh, ask questions and I'll do my best to answer them. So there's a lot of supplements and vitamins out on the market, as you probably know. And it's an overwhelming situation out there in the market. If you look on Amazon or go to the local drugstore, um, you just don't know where to start. I know I don't. So I'm a physician. I went to medical school in Kirksville, Missouri, an osteopathic medical school, and did my residency training at um, Washington University in St. Louis, a very reputable program in psychiatry. So um, while I, I am a DO, um, I try to practice holistic medicine as best as possible. Um, that said, I don't do like manipulation, that kind of stuff, um, but I do sometimes use vitamins and supplements. Now, being a licensed physician, I am bound to follow standards of Western medicine um, because they are tried and true for the most part, uh, but there's a lot of new medications that are coming out that uh, don't have a lot of track record. So in my practice, uh, I do rely on a lot of prescription medications because they have the track record and I'm, I, I help people with life-threatening illnesses. So you can't really uh, afford to mess around a whole lot. So um, considering that some 9% of people who have been diagnosed with depression um, do uh, kill themselves, um, I'm dealing with life and threat and life and death situations. So the stakes are a lot higher um, than somebody who's a little bit blue or a little bit um, anxious or something. So that's why, you know, physicians like myself do rely on prescription medications. Now, that said, there are a lot of useful um, vitamins and supplements that are out there, and I do recommend and prescribe some of them, um, if not by themselves, but sometimes with um, a medication to help it work better or to clean up residual symptoms rather than adding another medication on top of what they're already somebody's already taking. Now, the first line of um, vitamins that I use are commonly um, you know, deficient in people's diets. So vitamin D, vitamin B12, iron, um, these basic things that you can measure uh, by drawing blood. Now, vitamins are called vitamins for a reason. They were studied, you know, over the past hundreds of years to really find out what are vital ingredients and nutrients to human life. And so they call them vitamins, all right? There's a whole bunch of different ones a to Z, and they ran out of the alphabet. And there's, you can look it up. There's just hundreds of vitamins that are out there. Some are um, more likely to be depleted than others, um, like iron sometimes or vitamin B12, depending on your diet. So a few of them have been um, really associated with mental health issues. So like low B12 or low iron, you know, fatigue, memory problems, mood problems are associated with these things. Um, low... Um, what was the other one I was saying? Oh, vitamin D, you know, just general health and well-being, a feeling of malaise and not feeling good is associated with that one. So that's usually where I start with people as far as vitamins. Um, now, as far as herbal supplements, that's a whole other realm. So it's important to separate out the two. There are vitamins that are studied and well-established as being vital to our nutrient um, supply. And there are herbal supplements. So that's where the ashwagandhas and the St. John's wort and all the chamomile and all these different things come out. Come out. Now, none of those are essential, okay? Uh, they're not vital, per se, but they can be useful. Um, one example of a very useful uh, um, herbal remedy in psychiatry or mental health is St. John's wort. Uh, it's been around for quite a while. Uh, supposedly the Native Americans you know, would harvest and use it 
for mood and uh, pain relief and things like that. And actually, sometimes I will prescribe it if somebody's really depressed, but also very reluctant to take uh, prescription medication because of the perception that the risks are greater with a prescription medication than an herbal uh, remedy. Now, I think that is that perception that prescription medications are more risky than herbal supplements. I think that's a misnomer. I think that is not really true. I have known people and seen people who have ended up in the emergency room with liver failure because they took too much of different herbal supplements and things. So it's important to remember that herbal supplements um, can hurt you as well as help you and to be discerning in what uh, remedies you try. Valerian root, chamomile, um, these, vit these uh, herbal remedies are proven to be useful for calming down anxiety and things. And I actually um, toyed with making a line of herbal teas based on scientific data that's out there. Uh, but I realized it was a side project that would take up way too much time. And, and so sometimes I'll just make some herbal tea for friends and family uh, based on some of that. Um, there's the vitamin, uh, or not vitamin, I keep using that term. See, I even I conflate the two. Uh, but herbal remedies such as St. John's wort, which is used for anxiety and depression, similar to antidepressants like Prozac and Zoloft, and it really works the same way in a lot of regards on serotonin. It has a lot of the same side effects, risks, and things like that. Um, now, when you're looking for an herbal remedy or a combination pill, it's really important to be careful, okay? When I, when I pull up a bottle, you know, online, somebody brings in, oh, I'm taking this, you know, and I don't know what you want to know what you think about it. You look on the ingredients and you try to figure out, okay, what is this person really taking? A lot of times it's a whole bunch of nothing, okay? They put two dozen different ingredients on there, like ashwagandha, different things, and valerian root, and green tea extract, and these things. And not only is the data very thin, okay, the safety data is very thin, the efficacy data is very thin, if it's there at all, but the purity content of these non-FDA regulated herbal supplements is is not there. Nobody's really regulating it. So uh, the the safety of it, the purity of it can be very uh, variable. So if you're going to buy an herbal supplement, I do recommend you buy it if it's manufactured in the United States and tested by a third-party lab. So for example, my side, a side gig that I tried a short while ago, I, I made a supplement, uh, Trinity Herbal Health, uh, supplement. You can get it on Amazon. It never sold because I didn't put a bunch of advertising in it. And I'm, this is not a promotional video, but I, I put in there St. John's wort, manufactured in the United States, tested in the United States with some B12, some vitamin D, and some L-methylfolate, which is another vitamin. And so it's four ingredients, simple, data-backed, you know, and solid. Whereas if you look at a lot of these other supplements, it's just has it's just a garbage pile of stuff that sounds good or is in social media and somebody hyped it up some uh, influencer hyped it up so i'd be very discerning and very careful about these different uh, vitamins and herbal supplements now mo again most vitamins essential vitamins can be measured uh, uh, with blood labs now not all of them are routinely checked, you know, because there's, you know, hundreds of them, but a few really are key. So keep that in mind. And then going back to the herbal remedies, one principle that I learned, I think is helpful in discerning um, what herbal supplements can be useful for whatever, like upset stomach or whatever, is to look at the condition. Okay, let's say you have upset stomach. And you want an herbal supplement to help with that. You can look at, let's say, Chinese medicine or something. And if there is one remedy that keeps coming up in your research that is always listed and consistently mentioned 
as being potentially helpful, then it may be. Now, if there's like five dozen different remedies, oh, maybe this might help, maybe this might help, you know, there's just tons of different remedies all listed in a particular culture or uh, medicine genre, you know, in, uh, Ayurvedic medicine or uh, Buddhist, um, you know, medicine or something. If there's a whole bunch of different remedies for the same thing, then probably none of them work very well. Okay, but if there's one that keeps getting mentioned repeatedly, repeatedly in these different cultures and these different situations for a particular thing, like St. John's wort um, or ginseng for upset stomach, okay, then it probably does help because it's consistently being mentioned and, you know, there, it's been established historically and culturally. Um, so that's one way that you can evaluate whether it's a fly-by-night, you know, thing that somebody just kind of came up with and is pushing, or is it well-established over thousands of years um, in a culture that actually has some potential uh, for good. So um, let's see. If you have any questions about this, I'd be happy to share my opinion on it. Um, I know that what I've talked about is a little bit vague and generalized, but there's so much stuff out there that you can't be too specific, you know. But the take-home message is that if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Okay. Watch the other video here on uh, workout supplements. I'd like to share some information about that. That's a separate kind of thing. And share a couple of uh, interesting case studies that I've come across uh, relating to those things. All right. So if you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. And please ask uh, questions. And I'd be happy to share whatever common sense down to earth, I like to think, uh, psychiatric uh, opinion about those. Okay. Thank you for your support. Take care.